Hey guys, this is Coop from Garage Gym Reviews, and today I'm doing the ultimate squat rack guide. I wrote an article years ago on how to buy a squat rack, on what to look for, all the specs, and also gave recommendations. We'll put a link below the like button where you can check that out. I will also give you some specific recommendations. This is not gonna be like a roundup video where I break down all the best squat racks, compare them all. I'll give you some of my specific recommendations, but if you'd like to see a best squat racks video, let me know. We've also written an article on on it so you can check that out below the like button but if you'd like to see a video let me know in the comment section and we'll get to work on that but today i'm going to start by talking about the different types of squat racks then walk through all the things to look for in a squat rack which by the way if you're curious i have used about every squat rack from every manufacturer you can think of, all the way in the very high end, very expensive end from the Sornex, Hammer Strengths, the commercial oriented stuff, down to the very budget stuff that you find on Amazon. I've used it all and compared it all. So I know what to look for and I'm gonna help you basically buy either your first or your upgrade rack. Let's get into it. Okay, for any of these recommendations, I'll also put some links below the like button. Just so you know, those links are affiliate links, so if you purchase through them, if you'd like to support us, please do so. It'll pay us a small commission, doesn't increase the cost you pay. But if you don't want to, that's okay too. Um, you can take the advice and run. Okay, the first thing before I get into types of squat racks is why squat racks matter. Squat racks, I think, are the centerpiece for a majority of home gyms. Most home gym owners don't prescribe to a certain type of training. It's not like they're like, I'm a power lifter, I'm a CrossFitter. There certainly are those types, but most home gym owners are just general trainees. They're doing general strength and conditioning. They wanna get stronger, they wanna be more fit, they wanna be more able for their families, their jobs, whatever they want, they just wanna be more fit. And so a squat rack really is a tool that your training centers around both for barbell training, but also for all the attachments that they now offer. Things like the isolator that can be used for leg extensions, leg curls, and basically be used like bodybuilding machines you find in commercial gyms. But also just the general training things that we see for strength and condition equipment like barbells. So I think a squat rack is the centerpiece and should be one of the first pieces, if not the first piece you buy for your home gym and then build around because it's gonna take up the most floor space, it's also probably gonna take the most money, and it's something that you don't wanna to have to upgrade over time if you can just build on. So there's really five types of squat racks generally that we see. One is the combo rack. That is a rack that's usually used for powerlifting. It's used for squatting and also benching. They use it in competition. Most home gym owners don't really need something like that. Then you have the folding racks. Folding racks like the PRX Profile Series are made for people that want a rack that goes out of the way and then folds down and then you can use however you'd like. These are nice for people that wanna park in the garage. Why you'd wanna still park in your garage when you could use it like a full home gym, I don't know. But some people are crazy. Next is the squat stand, which is kind of like the fold-away rack. It has basically two uprights and has a stand at the bottom and is very small, very compact, also pretty cheap because it uses the least amount of metal, but still allows you to squat and be safe if you want to use safety spotters. Then you have the half rack, which is basically similar to a squat stand, but adds on another set of uprights and allows you to squat off the front and is a little bit more stable while also offering some weight storage. Then you have the almighty power rack. A majority of you should and will go towards a power rack. Having multiple uprights, being able to squat in the middle of it, using attachments for safety. Honestly, it's one of the best ways and most popular ways to squat. It's what you see in most commercial gyms. It's what you see in most university gyms. Also, you see a majority of time in home gyms. Now, I know a ton of people that love half racks. Me personally, I actually use a half rack. I like having the open space, but for a majority of home gym owners, I think they like power racks. Now let's talk about the specs, because there is a lot of differentiation between squat racks. Here's the thing, a majority, vast majority of squat racks you see today are gonna have a similar pattern, and that is a square tube upright with holes all throughout. In fact, we have an upright wall that we've created. <laughs> Literally, I think it's the only one in the world, Guinness, get at us, that we have every upright from every manufacturer, all the types that they do, so that we can compare and contrast how the attachments fit to the uprights so we can provide that information to you guys. But they're pretty much all the same pattern. It's a square tube that's either two by three inch or three by three inch with one inch or five eight inch holes, sometimes half inch and 11 gauge, sometimes seven gauge, sometimes 14 gauge steel. Like that's pretty much it. This is the best design. And the reason that's good for the consumer is it's infinitely modular 
and you can use attachments from all the different companies. So the first thing to look for, I think, is the upright size. So are you gonna go with a two by two, a two by three, or a three by three upright? Two by three was most popular. Now for most people, I would definitely recommend a three by three. It's pretty much what every company's coming out with. It's pretty much what all the new attachments are made for. If you want a rack that you're gonna have for the rest of your life, probably pass it down to your kids and never have to worry about the attachment availability, go with a three by three rack. Then you have the gauge of steel. A majority of racks, vast majority of racks that you see from the likes of Rogue Fitness, Rep Fitness, Titan Fitness, all those companies is going to be 11 gauge steel. This is a steel that is basically strong enough where you can hold about any amount of weight. They're all gonna be thousand pound rated. You can put as much weight as you'd ever really be able to lift but they're light enough that they're not so expensive for shipping, for assembling, and that's where like the seven gauge is. Seven gauge is a thicker steel, it's more expensive. Like a seven gauge rack for a home gym doesn't really make sense. You can go a lighter gauge, like a 12 gauge or a 14 gauge, but those are really the cheaper end Amazon racks of the world, which can still hold a lot of weight. For instance, the Fitness Reality 810 XLT, we dropped over 700 pounds on, it's a 14 gauge steel rack and it held up just fine. I don't think you really have to worry about the gauge of steel, but I would say just as a, a recommendation, 11 gauge is probably the best one to go with. Then we have hole size or your hardware size. Most racks are gonna be 5 8 inch or one inch. Some racks are gonna be a half inch. Some have some weird numbers in there too because they're trying to sell you specific attachments that the only they make. Here's what I'd say. Stay with either a 5 8 inch or one inch hardware size. That's what you wanna go with. I prefer a one inch because it's gonna be the same hole size all around, and it's also gonna be real thick one inch hardware that I think looks cool. Also, it allows for certain attachments that 5H inch don't allow, things like leg rollers that just, they're too thin. So I, for most people, I would say one inch, if you want a higher end rack is great, but for the price, 5H inch is your value option. So a three by three upright with 11 gauge steel, a 58 inch hardware or hole size, you're gonna be able to have west side hole spacing, which is one inch on center, holes through the bench area, so you can get your J-cups exactly where you'd like them. But that's basically probably what I'd look at for most people. Then you have the rack depth. So if you're gonna power rack, you're basically gonna be squatting through two different sets of uprights. So most often, the originals were like 24 inches. So you're talking about your Rogar 3s of the world, basically what Louis Simmons and Westside Barbell had used for years. 24 inches is fine, it's great, but people like a little bit more space. So then you have the 30 inch and the 43 inch. 43 inch basically allows you to have a box so it's the same distance on either side, which can be nice for attachments, but my preferred width for most racks is 30 inches. It's a little bit bigger than 24 inches, but it's still very compact. So in my suggestion, most of you that are getting a power rack, I think 30 inches is a good depth. Then you have rack height. This is gonna be based on where you live. If you live in a basement, you're gonna want a small rack, something like 80 inches or so. If you're really tall and have a garage gym with unlimited height, you may want a 108 inch rack. One thing I will say on the height of rack, sometimes people are like bigger is better until you get the rack in and then you realize, holy crap, I'm gonna have to jump up every time I do pull-ups. How am I gonna do weighted pull-ups? So I think for a lot of people, the 90 inch, 92 inch, somewhere around there, that's probably the best height. Then you've got to decide your space, okay? And this probably be something you do early on, but that's gonna determine how many uprights you have. Most squat racks are gonna have like a power rack. They're gonna have four uprights. A squat stand or a folding rack, it's gonna have two uprights. But if you want like a, a rack that has a full power rack plus weight storage, you're gonna have six uprights. If you want all of that, plus maybe like a Rogue Rhino or center mount lat pull down or something else on there, you could go as high as eight uprights. But this is the beauty of the modular system is you can build on and expand it as much as you like. So if you want a really huge rack, you can. If you move and want a smaller rack, you can do that. Or you can start small and build onto it. I think the modular system obviously is the best that we currently have and being able to start small and add on over time will be great. But for most of you, I think a six post rack is a nice option. And the reason being, you can have weight storage on the back and you have a full rack to squat in, pull in, bench in, 
And one of the biggest things I harp on is safety in a home gym because there have been people I know personally that have died benching in their home gyms. Happens every year where they didn't have safety, bar ends up rolling back on their neck and it's not something I wanna have any of you deal with. So for that reason, I like the box system because you can have really strong safety spotters. And then lastly is accessory compatibility. So most racks today that are using the 3x3 upright, they're either a true 3x3, they're using the Imperial system, or when they say 3x3, they're using the metric system, and they're actually like 75 millimeters by 75 millimeters. An example of this is Rep Fitness. Their uprights are 75 millimeter by 75 millimeter, even though they call them 3x3, whereas say Rogue or even Bells of Steel now, they have a true three inch by three inch upright. It's not a huge difference, but it will change how closely or tightly your accessories fit. So what I would say is for most people, make sure the uprights or rack that you buy is one that you like the accessories of the company. That doesn't mean you can't use other companies' accessories, but having accessories that are designed to fit their uprights and their ecosystem will provide less slop and will fit better. Also, the width of the rack you could have a 47 inch rack that goes outside to outside that won't fit 49 inch uprights like Rogue has on their rack. So just things to consider. Okay, lastly, a lot of information here, but I wanna give some specific recommendations. Again, if you'd like to see a full video breakdown comparing all the racks that are out there, let me know. But I'll just say this, if you're looking for a cheap rack, a cheap power rack, most people should probably go with something like the Fitness Reality 810 XLT. It's one of the cheapest racks. We've dumped a ton of weight on it. It's just really well priced. Also within there, if you want more of an ecosystem, you have the Rep PR 1100 or the Titan T2. Both of those are good options. Very similar racks, all of them. But I will say the accessories that Rep is actually offering for their lower end racks, their cheaper racks, are really nice. So I think buying into that system is probably a good option. Then if you go up from there and you're like, oh, I still want a power rack, what do I look from that's like middle tier? I think your Bells of Steel Hydra series, your Rep PR 4000, maybe your Rogue Monster Light series if you want something that's made in the USA and are willing to pay for it. Those are what I would look for. If you want just like the creme de la gym option, the option that I have, the option where it's like the in-game racks, you should be looking at the Rep PR 5000s, the Rogue Monster racks, maybe the Sorenex, XL or base camp racks on the really high end, or I've heard that Bells of Steel is actually coming out with a new Hydra series racks with one inch holes too. So I would look around there. Now, one thing to consider, and a lot of people look at this, is buying a rack second hand. I mean, it's metal. <laughs> Like these things are made to last a long time. Should you worry about a warranty and things like that? Here's what I'd say, generally, no. <laughs> I don't think, like warranties are nice to have. Like I w if I'm buying new, having a lifetime warranty, that is very nice. But these are inherently, extremely durable products that are steel on steel, right? They're using steel uprights with steel cross members with hardware, steel bolts and nuts, putting them together. Because of that, I have no problem at all recommending secondhand stuff. So if you can find a deal on it, great. The reality is, <laughs> if you're buying something secondhand, most of the time that I see is the prices aren't that far off from new, so you might as well buy new. Because if you're looking at something from a company that is like higher end, like a rep or a rogue or something like that, the resale market is already so high, people already have such a demand for it, you're not gonna be able to get it for that much cheaper. So for that reason, buying new may make sense, but I wouldn't have much worries about buying used squat racks. If you want a folding rack, something to go away, I feel like really the best option is the PRX folding system, their profile series. They fold away really well, use hydraulic shocks. Huge fan of them. If you want something cheaper that folds away, Rogue makes a folding rack, but it doesn't fold up. Just not as good of an experience. And then squat stands, all the major players have them. You've got your Rogue SML racks, which are made in the USA, but they're just okay. The Rep SR4000, or also if you wanna go on the cheaper end, the Titan X3 squat stands work well as well. Okay, that's a lot of content on how to buy a squat rack, but I will say this is the piece that you will invest the most amount of money in, take up the most amount of real estate, and use the most likely in your home gym. So do your due diligence, buy into something that you think is from a company that's gonna be around a long time. Also is a universal type of system. It's an open source system like the three by three uprights with one inch holes. Then you can just expand it as long as you want and new companies that come out with accessories, they're still gonna work. Okay, 
This has been Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. I would love to know which squat rack you have. Let me know in the comments and why you bought it. I'll see you next time. Peace.